Warriors! Good morning, and guess what? I'm going to share with you three reasons why people should invest in cryptocurrency. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, but my name is Coach JV. I'm the top health and mindset coach in the world. What you believe in your heart, you think in your mind, will eventually become your words and become your reality. Now, I repeatedly say the same things over and over and over again because what you repeatedly say gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious mind becomes an unconscious activity. And all the things that you're dealing with right now in your current paradigm, your current reality, we call it, in paradigm in the spiritual world, we call it, or whatever you want to call it, first of all, I believe in God and I follow the life of Jesus. I'm non-religious and I love you. I love you. Even if you don't love me, I love you. Now, the paradigm, the physical reality that you're living in right now is all the thoughts, actions, and behaviors that you have done and created up until this point. The beautiful thing about it is you can make a decision today to change your whole life, but it's a choice. So let's get right into it. So three reasons why you should get into cryptocurrency. Like I said, not financial advice. So I'm going to break this down. I'm going to break down three reasons. Number one is negative interest rates. Number two is your banks are rushing towards digital adoption. Now, we're already on a digital currency. If you think about that, I'll break that down a little bit further. And number three, number three is the fourth industrial revolution. It's an internet type moment that 99% of you are just going to walk away from. And you're going to come back and say there was this long haired hippie guy that came on every single morning, did about two YouTube videos a day, and I should have listened. You're going to be there at the bar with your buddies or at the poker table or sitting there with your girlfriends at the nail salon. And you're going to say, I had this opportunity and I didn't listen. And that's what most people are going to do. That's a fact. Because we're so bought into listening to the 99% that haven't been where we're going and nor are not willing to take a risk but are willing to sit in a box in a system that they hate and be miserable the rest of their lives and always complain about not being able to pay their bills. That's why people are so excited about their stimulus checks that are absolutely ruining our economy. So let's start with number one. Now number one is negative interest rates. Now what does that mean for investors? So I'm going to read it from Forbes because why would you believe some long-haired hippie guy? So Forbes magazine is a reputable magazine, right? It's something that's media, it's news. So let's listen to what they have to say, and then I'll give you my perspective on it. So we are heading into what's called negative interest rates. Now, Jerome Powell signaled that the negative interest rates are here to stay, and there's no end in sight. That was a freaky thing for him to say in regards to my perspective. There was no end in sight. And as he said it, <clears throat> that uncomfortable cough. Think about it, words. You were heading towards a negative interest rate environment. Now, that's great for people like me who want to invest and people like you who want to buy homes or properties or businesses or if you want to buy commercial properties because negative interest rates are cheap money. On the other hand, savers are losers. Your cash is trash, as Ray Dalio says. Your cash is trash. So what negative interest rates mean for savers and investors? If you live in the United States, uh, chances are you won't be seeing negative interest rates at your local bank, at least for the forecastable future. I beg to differ on that one. Okay. However, citizens in Europe and Japan, now let's, when was this? So this was back in, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I didn't even realize when this, this is crazy. This is even better. This is even better. Holy cow. I didn't even realize when I was doing my research, my fault, but this is February 22nd, 2016. So let's listen to this. Holy crap. We're heading towards negative interest rates. This was in 2016. Listen to what happened in Europe and we are heading towards negative interest rates. So now we're in 2021. This Wow. If, if you live in the United States, chances are you won't be seeing negative interest rates at your local bank, at least for the foreseeable future. However, citizens in Europe and Japan face a real possibility of facing negative interest rates at their bank branches. As central banks in nine large countries have now set key rates below zero, meanwhile, negative bond yields have become normal around the world, according to Bloomberg data. Okay, let's skip forward just a little bit. U.S. bond market are not uh, immune. Some, some security treasury T-bills have offered negative yields the past year. While economists continue to debate the uh, efficacy, efficacy of the impact of negative interest rates, the, the move below the lower bound of zero is a new phenomenon. To most people, negative interest rates and negative yields sound illogical, if not impossible. Applied to banking sector, negative rates means, listen closely, that the depositor has to pay the bank to hold his or her cash there. If deposit rates were negative 1%, for example, for every $1,000 deposit in the bank account, the holder would have to 
have around $990. It's exactly what I've been saying at the end of the year. Similarly, when the bond offers a negative yield, the buyer of the bond does not get the total investment amount returned to him or her at maturity. In Germany, one-year government bond currently yields negative 0.05. Buy this bond and you'll get less euros at maturity than what you put in. Our face value, these negative rates do not sound like a good deal, yet a multitude of investors pile into negative yield debt across many countries in Germany. Okay, This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is in 2016. Guess what? We are heading towards negative interest rates in 2021. I said this is illogical and unlikely. Now, what happened was is it slowly and methodically happened. As you look this way at a pandemic and they moved you towards digital currency, and now are you understanding why you're getting your stimulus check? Keep the people quiet. Let's go to negative interest rates. Let's crash the economy. And let's move to number two. So that's number one, why you should get into digital currency or stores of value. Number two is dwindling cash is pushing central banks towards race towards digital currencies. Deputy Governor of the Bank of Italy uh, um, told CNBC that increased focus on CBDC stems from general move away from cash. Cash is trash. All these uh, you know, people telling you, save cash, save cash, cash is trash. Commentators have been quick to assume that the advent of CBDCs could have implications on monetary policy. London central banks are accelerating their work on digital currencies, investors take note. Earlier this year, the Bank of International Settlements okay, published its, its latest survey showing that 86 86 percent of 65 central banks spoke about doing some form of central bank digital currency, CBDCs, be it research proofs of concepts or pilot development. Almost 15 percent are moving towards an actual research for pilot. What, what, um, what has spurred this activity? Deputy Governor of the Bank of Italy um, told CNBC that the increased focus on CBDC stems from the general movement away from cash, adding that this could undermine one of the basic functions of central banks. He added that an environment where cash is used less, less by both customers and merchants because the whole ecosystem is shifting towards being decentralized. You want to replace the functionality of cash with something that is digital, but is uh, conceptually as close as possible to cash. It's very different. Don't, don't get that twisted, words. Um, former member of the European Central Bank is now head of the BIS Innovation Hub, echoes at the view telling CNBC that we should be think of a CBDC a form of banknote adding that it's means of bringing money issued by central banks to the new modern infrastructure. Okay, so number one, you're going to have negative interest rates. So your cash in your account is going to get deflated. So you would like to take your cash and move it into store of value, gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, things that are appreciating. All your central banks are moving fast towards a digital currency, which is very different than your regular dollar. That goes into the negative interest rates. So why? Why? When Jerome Powell says we're going negative interest rates, would they move to a digital currency? Because now when you have your central bank digital money in your account, they can move the value of your account down very quickly. You're closer to the second uh, central bank. Number three is the fourth industrial revolution. This is back in 2019. Now are you seeing what happened with the pandemic? As you look this way, how are they going to move us towards this? Through a black swan event, warriors. All right, so we're going to watch this video. What is the fourth industrial revolution? Listen closely. Is that the world was first introduced to the phrase the fourth industrial revolution, and it's been a hot topic among academics, politicians, and business leaders ever since. But what exactly does it mean? The term fourth industrial revolution was coined by the founder of the World Economic Forum, a former professor named Klaus Schwab. Schwab wrote a book with that title to describe an era marked by a technological revolution that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. Let's break that down. Technologies like artificial intelligence, autonomous vehicles, or the Internet of Things are becoming ingrained in our day-to-day -day lives and even our bodies. Think of voice-activated virtual assistants, face ID recognition, or healthcare sensors. Schwab first presented his vision of the fourth industrial revolution at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting here in Davos in 2016. But to understand the idea, we need to go much further back in history to industrial revolution number one. The first industrial revolution started in Great Britain around 1760 and spread to Europe and North America through the early 1800s. It was powered by a major invention, the steam engine. The result? New manufacturing processes, the creation of factories, and a booming textiles industry. From the late 1800s, the second industrial revolution was... So first industrial revolution, think who the richest people in the world are. 
It's marked by mass production and new industries like steel, oil, and electricity. The light bulb, telephone, and internal combustion engine were a few of the major inventions of this era. The two, think about who the richest people in the world are. The third industrial revolution, sometimes known as the digital revolution, occurred in the second half of the 20th century. In just a few decades, we saw the invention of the semiconductor, personal computer, and the internet. So what's up? The three, who are the richest people in the world? We are about to become the uncommon 1%. Listen. Separates the fourth industrial revolution from the third. Experts say the main difference is that technology is merging more and more with humans' lives, and that technological change is happening faster than ever. Consider this. It took 75 years for 100 million users to adopt the telephone. Instagram signed up 100 million users in just two years, while Pokemon Go caught that amount in one month. 3D printing is just one example of fast-paced technology in the fourth industrial revolution. The industry has gone from a business idea to big business, with 3D printer shipments expected to increase from just under 200,000 in 2015 to 2.4 million in 2020. Today, you can have a hip replacement from a 3D printed bone or use a 3D printed bionic arm. Talk about blurring the line between humans and technology, right? This new era of technology is driving a lot of innovation. You can see in this chart the number of patents related to the fourth industrial revolution for things like 3D printing or AI has been climbing up and up since early 2000. Organizations are embracing new technologies to make their businesses more efficient, similar to how they embraced the steam engine during the first industrial revolution. But some companies and governments are struggling to keep up with the fast pace of technological change. Rec this is important, public and private sector coming together. Research shows innovators, investors, and shareholders benefit the most from innovation. The risk is that the fourth industrial revolution is making inequality, which is already a big issue, even worse. One study found billionaires have driven almost 80% of the 40 main breakthrough innovations over- You have a choice right now. The rich are gonna get extremely rich and the poor are gonna get extremely poor. These stimulus texts sound like UBI, Universal Basic Income. The middle class is going to get freaking wiped out, warriors. Hear me out. Right now in this video, the middle class is getting wiped out. You have a choice to live off the government or to become the investor of what people are going to live off of. Over the last 40 years. That's a problem when the richest 1% of households already own nearly half of the world's wealth. Experts warn we are in a winner-takes-all economy, where high-skilled workers are rewarded with high pay and the rest of workers are left out. Boom, there you go, she said it. Studies confirm technologies like AI will eliminate some jobs and create demand for new skills that many workers don't have. Privacy concerns are another issue as the fourth industrial revolution turns every company into a tech company. Industries from food to retail to banking are going digital, and they're collecting a lot more data. Food, retail, and banking are going digital. Are you going to be the investor or the consumer who's struggling? Data about their customers along the way. Users are starting to worry that companies know too much about their private digital lives. The World Economic Forum. Okay, so let's remember what she said about the middle class getting wiped out, and let's hear it from the person who announced negative interest rates. He didn't announce negative interest rates. I'm speaking out of school announced a low interest rate environment for the foreseeable future. No end in sight. Let's hear from his mouth of what he says about the middle class. This is why the third reason why you should best will lead to certain uh, changes in, in economies. There are firms that will never recover from the crisis. There are potentially sectors uh, that may that may never recover from the crisis. We won't be traveling um, as much, for, for example. Um, what worries you most about the long-term impact? I would agree that um, what this crisis is in the process of doing is it is accelerating a lot of pre-existing uh, technological change. So technological change raises productivity generally, and over long periods of time, those gains tend to be broadly shared. But in the short term, that may or may not be the case. And I, I along with many others, We'll leave social media out of it, by the way, in terms of adding to <clears throat> productivity. I would not sure I would say that for social media, but <clears throat> for other kinds of technology, I would say it. And um, in this particular uh, situation, I, I would worry that the changes, we're, we're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to- You hear that? We're not coming back to the same economy. 
one that is leveraged the technology. Listen to what he said and what he's worried about. Make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers who, as Andrew just mentioned, you know, the, it's uh, relatively low paid public facing workers in the uh, service sector who are bearing the brunt. This is largely minorities and women or, or skewed toward minorities and women and relatively low paid. So those people are going to struggle to get back to work in their old jobs or in, in many cases in new jobs. So, I mean, I think you'll see more telework. You'll see probably the acceleration of, of automation. Um, all of that was in the process of happening, but you're going to see much more of it. And I, I guess that for me, the main takeaway from all of this is that um, even after the unemployment rate goes down and the economy is, you know, and there's a vaccine, there's going to be a probably a substantial group of workers who are going to need support as they find their way in the post pandemic economy, because it's going to be different in some. I mean, I don't know who else you could hear it from is the person who runs your economy in America, uh, news stations, some hairy guy on YouTube. At what point, at what point do you stop taking advice from people who still have a beeper and a fanny pack? No offense to the fanny pack people. Uh, somebody said they were a fanny pack at the gym. So cool. But if they're taking change out of their fanny pack, you got to be worried, Warriors. All kidding aside, Warriors, this is time for us to rise. There's never been an opportunity like this in history. First industrial revolution, second industrial revolution, third industrial. Those are the richest people in the world. And now we're in the fourth industrial revolution and we have the uncommon 1% Warriors. That could be you. But you have to know what you're doing, Warriors. That's why we created our Warrior Academy. Down below, you can join my private Warrior Academy. Over 930 Warriors now, 10 different countries coming together as one ecosystem. Cryptocurrency courses, cryptocurrency call every Thursday. I have access to my portfolio. I'm not a financial advisor. It's not financial advice. I'm just an honest dude saying, here's what I'm doing. A insane exit strategy so you can get out in time because this is just the first wave. I believe 2025 is when it's really going to see its adoption. People are going to get wrecked in the cryptocurrency space. They're going to come rushing in. And as you come rushing in, the billionaires are going to pull their money. They're going to buy back in. And that's what we're going to do. The smart money is going to buy back in. I'm not saying I'm a billionaire, but I will be one of the uncommon 1% in the world. And as you can do the same thing, there's never been an opportunity like this in history. We have cryptocurrency calls. We have a 120 day challenge, mind, body, and immunity, nutrition plan, workouts. There's nothing like it in the world. So click the link down below. You can become the uncommon 1% as we rise together as one community bringing the money back to people but in order to become wealthy you need to change this words I have everything you need to be successful down in the description down below three reasons why you should get into cryptocurrency number one negative interest rates number two is dwindling cash is going to all banks going to digital currency number three is the fourth industrial revolution is the richest people in the world that's to include you now warriors rise let's go